Welcome to Real Gospel for Real People. My name's Chris and I'm with Lights and Perfection Incorporated. This message is, is for uh, just for anybody out there in need of salvation. This is called Real Gospel for Real People to bring the hope of Jesus Christ, the hope of heaven, the hope of the resurrection for all those in the world. There's a scripture, it's John 3, 16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. I'm glad you've chosen to quickly view this. I just want to quickly say that I have a lot of friends in my past life, and I know that my I mean, they are just on my heart. God is putting you guys on my heart for the hope of salvation. I know some of you may have it, but some of you may not. And I just want to start out by saying it is by grace through faith. Many of you who are hearing this may, may know my past life. And if you don't, there's a, there's a link in the description that, that will lead to our webpage, which is lightsimperfection.com. And you can check that out. And there's a book that details my whole life and everything that I've gone through and how, how God has made himself real to me. And I just really want him to make himself real to you because there is no other way to heaven. And I have searched up and down this world. I have had many things. I have lost many things. And there's one thing that remains constant in my life is that Jesus Christ is the hope of heaven. And it is by grace through faith. There's nothing you can do to earn it. And you can look at my past to realize that there was nothing in my life worth while that could earn my earn favor before God. I want to really quickly bring to you an illustration to help clarify the the scripture that I gave you. And and it's not even about the scripture. It's about what the man Jesus Christ did, who was 100% man and 100% God. And first of all, to give you an illustration, you know, in some states in this nation, we still have what is called the death penalty. And if someone were to commit such a heinous crime, that judge, that righteous judge, would sentence that such a person to death. And many people, there's, there's some people that agree with it. There's some people that disagree with it. Nevertheless, it is a fact of life. And so here is a, a, a man on trial for, for some heinous act of crime, some murder, and he gets the death penalty. This is normal. And so to make God real to you in the understanding of what Jesus Christ did on the cross 2,000 years ago for you and for me, for sinners all alike, is that... While this man was on trial, let's just, this is just an illustration, it's not a real man on trial, but while this man was on trial, the, the hope of the gospel and Jesus dying on the cross is likened to a man on trial for a heinous crime and then somebody comes in and says, yeah, judge, we know that this man committed the crime and he's deserving of death. However, we have paid the price for him. So it is that Jesus Christ paid the price for you who live in sin and realize this and understand this, that I, I love you and I don't want you to perish. And so those that believe in him will have everlasting life. They will not perish. And so the hope of the gospel, Jesus died for our death sentence, for our crime and punishment deserved by God, the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus Christ so that those that believe in him, simply believe in him and have faith in what he did on the cross can have access and favor with God, not based on what they do. And so it's first necessary to come to God with a broken heart and understand that you're all sinners. We're all sinners. I'm in the same boat in my life, maybe more than most by looking at my past and understanding the things that I have done, the heinous acts that I have committed. I have, I have seriously hurt people. I have peddled drugs. I have seen friends die. I have seen friends go to prison. I have been to prison. I have, I have just committed awful, awful acts. And you know, you may be the person that says, yeah, but, but, but Chris, I haven't done any of those things. You may not have, but you're still apart from God. You're still living in sin. You're living according to your own desires. And if you have said one lie in your life, the punishment is, is death by default in that sense. And the hope of resurrection is past you. And so if you want to get to heaven, Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And I know that's a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow because we live in a postmodern generation where everybody has their own ideas of, of how to get to heaven. Well, if I'm really good, then, then you know, God will, at, at the end, he'll say, you know, it's okay. You can come in anyways. 
And again, that's why I use the illustration of a man who committed a heinous act. And, and even a person that committed a small act, if you get caught shoplifting and come before the judge and the judge says, well, what do you have to say for yourself? And you say, well, judge, you know, I, I did that, but I did all these good things. Well, the judge is going to laugh at you. He's not going to let you off scot-free because you did all sorts of other good things. Now, having a second chance at life through Jesus Christ is what it's all about. Now, no one is good. And the most basic of sin is what separates us from God. And the idea in the Garden of Eden, we've all heard the story of Adam and Eve. What separated them from God was that God gave them one simple simple instruction and he said listen and he didn't just give them that instruction because he was trying to keep them away from something he was trying to protect them from themselves he gave them free will and since he is god all by himself and knows all things he said just don't eat of that one tree for in the day you eat of it you shall surely die and the thing that we're feeling and we're seeing especially in this nation right now with the rioting and the looting and the the coronavirus and all these things taking place our life is fragile We do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you need to answer for your sins and to repent and to turn back to God and to understand that that simple act of disobedience that Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden was all it took to separate them from God. Well, then you could say, well, well, how is God God love if if he... booted them out of the Garden of Eden for such a small thing? It, It wasn't that. It was sin, and to show the severity of sin, the fact that that in the Old Testament there was a sacrificial offering system that live animals had to be slaughtered to, to atone for sin, and so it is with the blood of the spotless Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ. He stepped in our place for our sin and said, you know what, Father God, I'll pay for it for them. Now, God is love, and that is love. Greater love has no one than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. As it is, Jesus Christ willingly went to the cross for you and for me to pay the price for our sin, to reconcile us back to God. Because he knew that in the end, when we passed from this life, that was it. Now, what can await us is chains and imprisonment in hell, or we can go to glory in heaven. And that is what the hope of the gospel is. So it is, Jesus Christ died for our sins. He paid our death penalty. He was buried in the tomb. And three days later, he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures. And according to historical evidence, nobody could find that body after he was raised from the dead. However, over 500 people in history, have accounted seeing him after the resurrection in that brief period of time that he was still on earth before he ascended back to the Father. Now, if you don't believe me and and you just want to say, well, Chris, you're talking foolishness, that's because you're perishing because the hope of the gospel is the power of God to those who are being saved. And I just pray that God would open your eyes and open your hearts and to just look around and look at all the evil in the world and how that we were led astray by our own desires in many ways in various times in our lives. And we need God. This nation needs God. This nation needs to fall on her face and repent before God. This is the hope of the gospel. We need repentance in this nation because repentance leads us back into favor and right standing before God. If we think we can be proud and arrogant any longer and defy the king of heaven and expect blessings on this nation, we have become deceived. And thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and his blood being shed willingly so that those that have faith in him can receive forgiveness of all those things they've done in the past. And that's what it's about, brothers and sisters. That's what it is about. And I know some of you, this is for somebody in particular, I know it is. And I pray that God would just bless you through this so that that you could come to him in faith and receive salvation for your souls so that you can know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven. Not based on your works, not based on a a balance between good and evil, but based on what Jesus Christ did on the cross when he died and three days later when he rose from the dead. Praise God for that. That just as he died to sin, so are we to believe in him and die to sin, our sin nature. 
and to be born again by his spirit, to be given a second chance on life, a new heart, a tender heart, a real heart, a heart that yearns for God, a heart that's no longer proud and arrogant or angry or bitter or hostile or selfish. This world has gotten so selfish, it is unbelievable. All you got to do is flip on the news for one second and see all the selfish acts of humankind. If we think that we can change humanity by going out and doing anything other than repenting, we have become deceived. And we need to turn back to God as individuals and as a nation, regardless of race, color, or creed. It doesn't matter who you are. We all bleed red. We need Jesus Christ and his red blood that he bled on the cross for us. His being raised from the dead shows that God loves us and loves him because he did not allow him to stay in the grave, but said, you know what? You laid down your life willingly. I'm going to bring you back up from the grave. And when I bring you back up from the grave, I'm going to bring many sons to glory with you. And those sons to glory are you, brothers and sisters, the men and women of this nation, the men and women of the world, the hope of the gospel. The reason why I'm so just passionate about this right now is because it's true. And again, to those of you that have known me in the past, you know, you know who I was. And that's not who I am anymore. Because I'm a brand new man. The old is gone. The new has come. Jesus Christ makes new creations. He heals from the old sin nature and makes new. That is the hope of the gospel. The, the question is, since this is true, where do you stand? Do you still want to believe in your own version of heaven? Not based on facts, not based on evidence, just based on how you feel? Or do you want to believe in the truth that I am telling you right now, the gospel truth? Are you ready to accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He will by no means condemn you or cast you away if you turn all of your heart to God. God in his word said, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, that is what it takes and seek them seek him with their whole heart he will heal their land he will turn and heal their land but the reality is is that what we're experiencing right now is 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 judgment judgment for sin judgment for evil this this has gotten out of control and we need to turn back to god to become made new we need a new awakening a new revival jesus died for your sins and was raised from the dead on the third day. To prove the validity of the message, God raised him from the dead. To prove that what he was teaching, what he was doing was real. The fact that over 500 people after his resurrection saw him alive, saw the nail prints in his hands, is evidence, is proof. And no one can disprove the Holy Bible. No one has been able to disprove the Word of God. It is the most proven book in all of history. People are going to try to tell you it's false, but if you look into it yourself and hear what I'm saying, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Freedom. For freedom, Christ died for us. Receive it. But I can't make the choice for you. Your mother can't make the choice for you. Your father can't make the choice for you. Your best friends can't make the choice for you. You have to make the choice. And this choice is, are you going to believe in the one and only Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, the pure, sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Are you going to believe in Him to save your soul? I just pray right now for each one listening that God would just open up your heart to receive the good news of Jesus Christ, that He laid down His life for our sins, and God raised Him on the third day to prove, to prove that it was true, and that the whoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Father, in Jesus' name, just bless each person, Lord, hearing this message, Lord, and just awaken them to the gospel of your salvation. In Jesus' name. Now, friends, I appeal to you by the love of Jesus Christ. Receive this free gift of salvation. You don't have to earn it. It's yours. It's free. And it will change you. And that change will cause good works to flow out of your life. If you have been bound by your own sin nature and need freedom, 
Turn to Jesus. Come to him, all who labor and are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. He went to the woman at the well, and she was burdened by sin. She was in, she had her fifth marriage relationship. She was worn out. She was worn out, and Jesus met her and gave her a drink of what we call living water. And it's that living water that is being offered to you right now. Are you sick of feeling dry and empty and depressed in this culture, in this generation? Turn to Jesus. He will heal you. He will deliver you. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, hearken. Hear this message. God bless you all. I love you all.